Good afternoon. Good evening. Yeah. You're, uh, it's very late to have a presentation, so you're either very interested or you have no friends and you've got nothing to do. So we'll try and keep it as fast as possible, okay? Okay, 25 years of evolution, okay? We're all here because it's an international green exhibition and we want to be green. So we started off with engine energy responsiveness, then we called it environmental protectionism, we called it environmental sustainable design, and now we call it green buildings. So what is green? So green, as an adjective, is an inexperienced person. Origin, possibly from the color of an unripe fruit. Use, he's a little green, but I think he'll pick it up quickly. Or as a noun, he's an environmentalist. So we have 25 years of evolution, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to the same thing. We want to save energy and we want to save the planet. Uh, my friend Matthias was here earlier. I'm sure he told you. I, I'm not sure I didn't listen in on what Matthias said. But at the end of the day, it's not about saving the planet. It's about saving, providing something for our, um, our children and our children's children, because the planet will always survive. So we go back to basics. The nature. Um, our product, um, NES Solar, is a natural product. So it's nature. Um, it's based on Kirchhoff's first law, which states that what goes in must come out. So when we look at energy conservation within a building, whatever we put into a building design, that's what's going to come out of the building. So, we look at the location and orientation, the building form, the levels of thermal transmittance, solar transmittance, absorption. We get all that right and we get a good operating expenditure. We put rubbish in, the operating expenditure becomes very expensive. So, the laws of physics never change. There are lots of products available. There are companies that rebrand products to say they're green products. But at the end of the day, the laws of nature remain constant. They will never, ever change. So we're not going to get around the laws of nature. We won't get around the laws of conduction, latent heat, and radiation. Heat will always move from a higher plane to a lower plane. It's one of the basic laws of physics. So in offices, we use artificial lighting and air conditioning. Yet we go outside and we adapt. So why can't we adapt in buildings? So our body has a thermal regulation system. We can actually maintain a comfortable body temperature. So if we can actually design a building around those parameters, then we can reduce the energy usage. What we're looking to do is provide a building where we're within the comfort zone. So buildings can be classified as externally loaded and internally loaded. Externally loaded offices usually suffer from high operational costs. Now in Malaysia, we have externally loaded buildings because all the heat comes through the windows. We build big glass buildings and all that heat comes in and then we try to cool it. Internally loaded offices have considerably lower operating costs because then the heat is coming from the people, from the equipment that they're using. So how much do we spend on air conditioning and artificial lighting? Artificial lighting in a typical commercial office accounts for about 23%. Air conditioning, 67%. General equipment, about 10%. So air conditioning is the biggest contributor to our electricity bill. So where does the heat come from? Basically, 46% of that heat comes through the glass comes through the window. 8% through the roof, 13% through normal air movement, 8% from equipment, 6% from occupants, 19% from the structure. So if we have a glass building, if we have a glass office, then the thing that's giving us the most problem are the windows. So it makes sense that we actually address the windows. So it's not too bad if we have a small house with small windows. So that 60 over percent is 60 over percent of a small amount. 
but most offices look like this. So now we have a tremendous heat gain coming into the building. So we have an age-old problem. Problems are unique to the climate and culture. In Malaysia, we have glare, we have humidity, we have heat, and we want modesty. We don't want people to see what we're doing. So imported products designed for Northern Hemisphere might not necessarily be optimized for our climate. So how green is your building? How many offices in Malaysia still look like this? If you drive back to from here tonight, look at the buildings, you'll see so many of them have window blinds which are down. If you actually look on the architect's website who designed that building, it's a beautiful building and there's no window blinds. But in reality, the occupant moved in and installed lots and lots of window blinds. So we closed the window blinds to reduce the glare because the glare is the biggest problem. The lighting energy costs are increased because now we've blocked out the sunlight. So there's no point saying this fantastic window allows so many percentage of light transmittance because now we close the window blinds. So its percentage transmittance is zero. Additional building cooling loads are created by the artificial lighting. And the window blinds increase the internal temperature. One of the problems with window blinds in Malaysia is when we pull down the window blind, there is air trapped behind that window blind. The sun is still passing through that transparent surface, the glass, and it's warming the air. That air then gets hotter and moves into the space. So it's a bit like boiling a saucepan of water on the stove. Eventually, the steam will be generated. So if we want to reduce the temperature in an office in Malaysia, the first thing we can do is take away the window blinds and we'll get maybe a one, two degree temperature reduction. But then we have a problem with glare. So we could just buy everyone sunglasses and everyone's happy, yeah? But unfortunately, people don't like wearing sunglasses in the office, apart from the odd one or two. Okay, and the other thing is that the quality of the working environment gets controlled by a small number of people. So if you sit near the window, you control the window blind. So you're the boss, even though you're not the boss. In commercial offices in Malaysia, we have a tendency to build offices, managers offices around the perimeter and everyone else sits in the middle. So if the boss is not happy and he's got too much glare, he closes the window blinds, you get nothing. So one of the big problems. So what are our solutions? Our solutions are window blinds, solar film, Brisa Lay, and light shelves. Window blinds are great, they stop glare, but so do sunglasses and lots of other things. As I mentioned earlier, one of the problems with window blinds is the heat builds up behind them. Solar film, yes, it rejects heat. Um, in some cases, to get the best heat rejection, we actually reduce the amount of light. One of the things it doesn't do is uh, reduce a significant amount of glare. Brisole gives us exterior shading. Light shells, because they work on direct reflection of light, and the sun moves up very quickly in Malaysia, unless they're in the direct path of the sun, we don't really get much benefit from them. So the natural solution. So this is where I now become a salesman. So Nest Solar is a biomimetic photoluminescent glazing system. Basically, it consists of three sections. The first layer is solar control, infrared and UV rejection. The second is glare control through refraction and diffraction. And the third part is daylight harvesting by photon generation. So why is it biomimetic? It's biomimet biomimetic is a science which studies the processes in nature. If any of you know about organic solar cells, the process in nature is we take the energy from the sun, we take that energy out through an exterior circuit, and we actually have electricity. Nest Solar works on a very similar principle. Um, and the principle is that we take the energy from the sun, and from that we actually generate light. So we're turning that heat into useful light. So it's photoluminescent basically because it absorbs the electromagnetic radiation. So the process allows us to filter the sunlight by externally reflecting the infrared and the ultraviolet light. 
we diffuse the light so we scatter it so we don't get glare so we don't need sunglasses and we get minimal loss of transmittance of light refraction and diffraction is then used to actually throw the light up onto the ceiling so when the light comes from the ceiling it's more natural it's like light coming from the sun rather than light coming directly through a window so how does it work okay well, basically, when energy is absorbed by a molecule of, poly, uh, molecule of pigment, one of the molecule's electrons is elevated from its ground state to a higher orbit. So basically, a photon... Let's put a laser pointer on here. No, okay. Basically, a photon will actually enter the pigment, and that photon then gets excited. As it gets excited, the energy within that coating um, basically emits photons, so it emits light. So what we're actually doing is we're generating light from heat. The same way that a photo cell generates electricity from the sun, we're generating additional light. The unit is actually made up of three different independent layers. The first layer polarizes and reduces the amount of infrared transmission. The second layer actually takes that light and focuses it through diffraction grating up at the ceiling. And the final layer is the layer which actually generates additional light. The amount of light we actually generate is about 132 candela per watt of energy absorbed. So the window is equivalent of a high pressure sodium vapor lamp. There are five different filters available. Cool view, which is glare control. Clear view, glare control. Modesty is for privacy. Then we have daylight and microluva, which are the elements that generate light. What we're trying to do is actually get that light in from outside, throw it up at the ceiling, and not get glare. So this is actually a model showing what actually happens as the light hits the nest solar. It's scattered up onto the ceiling and from the ceiling back down. And there you actually see how it's operating in Malaysia. As the sun rises up, this top element is generating light, which is throwing onto the ceiling. The rest of the light is coming through um, and diffusing into the space. What we're actually doing is when we put the coating on the window, is we're creating a natural light fitting on the ceiling directly above the window. So if you have four windows, you have the equivalent of four light fittings. And depending on the height of the coating, we actually get the, the throw into the space. Here you actually see um, Nest Solar in action. Um, this is actually a cafeteria that we did. Previously, they had a window blind. They had window blinds all the way along. We put the light generating coating at the top, glare control at the bottom. Previously, as you see on the bottom right hand corner, they could not see anything outside. Now they have a view, but from in outside, no one can see inside. So we've given the privacy, we've given the natural light, and we've rejected the heat. There's lots of things we can actually do with Nest Solar. We can actually put graphics on the outside that are viewed from the outside, but not viewed from the inside. So the picture here you see is the same window. So we can actually decorate a building externally, but we can still have a clear view from the inside. This is taking it to another level. This is a concept that was done for a building in Mumbai, where we were going to put henna all over the building, but the problem was that you would see it from inside the building. With Nest Solar, we can actually give you a clear view of the sky. And there you see it moving on. So basically, we see here the same office um, in Malaysia, um, commonly used solution of window film and window blinds, and the same office after the application of Nest Solar. In this office, we actually have daylight harvesting, glare control, heat rejection, you have an exterior view and the privacy. So basically, it's an all-in-one solution, and that's it. <laughs>